Hey everybody, it's spring. You know what that means? We're coming up on water park season. Hello everybody. Alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan Sir, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans because that's who we are and that's who we care about. So Ryan, here we are, water park season. Time is flying by. I know it's I feel like Kings Island opens and then it goes daily a blink of an eye later. And next thing you know, uh, they're getting ready to open the water park. And then in another blink, they're at eight o'clock closes again. I That's how every year goes. Yeah. Do you spend much time in Soak City? So the answer is maybe um, because I always make the commitment that I'm going to spend more time in the water park and that I rarely live up to that. Uh, last year, I don't think that I did any days in the water park but the year before that i did like five which for me is a ton i remember when i i went to the water park for um when they had the tricks and treats not tricks and treats whatever they called it at the time uh the the daytime halloween thing there and i remember when it was first moved there going there and thinking this is the first time i've stepped foot in this water park in 12 years or something like that for a park i go to every day um but i'm coming to enjoy it a lot more and there's a lot of value to it, you know, being included with park admission to Kings Island. You know, there's no separate gate there. So I think there's a lot of value. And, uh, you know, but you do find that there are those guests that, you know, that's the only thing they do is mm-hmm. Soak City. So uh, it's, a, it's a big day, you know, for them when Soak City Water Park opens uh, this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, this is what, the 35th So, yeah, yeah 35th, 35th season. Part- 35th season with 50 water attractions, including 36 water slides. Soak City offers entertainment options galore for all ages to experience. Um, That's one of the things, too, there, you know, Ryan, is that you've got, you know, there's the attractions, the water attractions for the kids. You've got, uh, you know, the different things that appeal, you know, to the teenagers. And you've got, you know the thrill seekers, you know, the aquatic thrill seekers, you've got, uh, you know, tropical plunge. I mean, that is uh, an adrenaline pumping attraction there. Uh, Have you ever done that where you've, you've stood in and the floor drops? I've done it twice. Too, too many. That is something that doesn't matter how many times you do that. You can never prepare for that floor to drop. Kind of like drop tower. You you can do it over and over again. And still you did until that happens, you know, you, you can't really prepare for that. So I kind of compare it to that. Yeah. And it was funny because the first, uh, when Kings Island was putting in tropical pr- plunge, I remember that was the first year I went to IAPA and I was talking to, uh, it was a whitewater that made that. Yeah. It was whitewater. And I was talking to them and I was like, so, you know, I've seen this stuff on TV. What's it like? And they're like, well, imagine being locked in a casket stood up and then the bottom drops out. And I was like, that sounds like a really good time. You know, so uh, you have to try it once. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I had to more... because, yeah, I, I was going to say I had to try it uh, because we had the Travel Channel was coming out to do a, a feature on uh, thrilling water rides. Mm-hmm. So the only way for me to authentically talk about it would be, you know, to have experienced it. So uh, uh, that was my time doing it. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I was going to say, I've seen more people chicken out on that ride than any other ride. Like even like the beast and stuff like that. Every once in a while you get like the little kid that's like, yeah, I'm not doing this. They go out the exit. Tropical plunge. If you wait 15 minutes for it, you will see three people not ride. Uh, they'll punt in line. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 de- yeah. I mean, it's definitely terrifying if you're, especially if you're a young kid, you know, and, or you're getting close and, and you see people, you know, just dropping that just adds to the, you know, the anticipation and the, uh, I guess the, uh, you know, the scare factor there in, in doing it. But, you know, it's Oak City, you talk about all the different attractions, but it's also a really good place uh, to have a meal. You've got Coconut Grove yes. that was redone last year. Very nice job with the refurbishment there. Didn't get a lot of attention last summer, you know, just how how good of a job they did in, in, in fixing that. And, um, you know, the food there. Very, very good. And then you've got the Island Smokehouse. I remember when they built the Island Smokehouse, uh, and that was before they had Coney Barbecue, and we used to make trips to the water park just to eat there. You know, because that was like, that was really Kings Island's, 
I, I want to say Red's Hall of Fame Grill was kind of like the 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 corner turn from mm -hmm. crappy carnival food to like, oh, this is actually decent. But that was the first like fast casual, like you 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 eat there, but you're not necessarily like treating yourself like you would with the Red's Hall of Fame Grill. This is all before meal plans, by the way. But um, the the from what I understand, they parsed down the menu quite a bit there, so it's very similar. Uh, it's smaller than Coney Barbecue, and in, uh, that's probably the right thing to do is to put your focus on Coney Barbecue rather than the one in the water park. But um, it was always very good. You know, yeah, outstanding chicken wings there, so I always enjoyed that when I would go out there to have a meal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then they've got you know the bar behind uh, Coconut Cove too. You know, so if you want to. You know, you're 21 and up and you want to have a drink, you've got that opportunity there as well. Yeah, yeah. So really enjoy that. But um, Don, what's that T-shirt behind you? It is a Tower Topics T-shirt. Uh, we have sold uh, several of these. Uh, they're available uh, for $22. That includes shipping. So if you're a fan of the show, uh, it's a good way to... Uh, uh, you know, show that you're a fan and also support Ryan and I. Um, you can order them by simply sending us a message through our X. Just send us a direct message and say that you're interested. We'll send you uh, the information on how to uh, purchase it through Venmo. And then it only takes a couple of days to get it shipped out to you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So hit us up at Tower underscore Topics on X and uh, we'll get that out to you. And uh, it'd be very quick, and the the shirts look absolutely. It, it was it was uh, kind of cool to see you know a couple people wearing them this past weekend at Kings Island. I've so I've had a couple people walk past me at Kings Island wearing Tower Topics t shirts that either didn't recognize me or at least didn't say anything, and it's so odd that just like oh I'm casually wearing this t shirt for you know a podcast that I'm on. But I don't know. If anyone never sees me, feel free to say hi. But you don't have to. But uh, love seeing the T-shirts around the park. Absolutely. Um, so, Don, you uh, we, we, we talked a couple uh, last week about how we had some bucket list food items uh, that we wanted to try around the park. Uh, and you had a, a big list of them. Uh, did you get to do any of those this past weekend? I did have a chance to try uh, something that I was looking forward to at Tom and Chi, which mm -hmm. is located on International Street right by the Eiffel Tower and Showplace Theater. Uh, I had the, the barbecue uh, uh, bacon grilled cheese mm -hmm. sandwich. comes with chips. Uh, you know, I thought it was outstanding. Now, I've, I've had different meals around the park now, you know, several. Uh, the pub burger is still number one for me, um, but, you know, the... Uh, Barbecue, bacon, grilled cheese from Tom and Chi. I mean, it, it's right there with it. I'm certainly going to try it again on my next visit to Kings Island. And I, I thought that was, you know, a, a really good, it was, you know, filling. And again, it comes with the chips. And I thought the Coke Zero that I got there was the best tasting Coke Zero that I've had in the park. It's funny that what you're saying is completely valid because Coke Zero, Coke Zero is my favorite kind of Coke. But I will be the first to admit that there's six out of ten Coke Zero and there's ten out of ten Coke Zero. And depending on and this is not just the Kings Island, this is anywhere. Anywhere. But depending on where you get it, it it really makes a difference for it. Um, so I'm glad you enjoyed. I actually ate that one of my meals too. The the barbecue. Yeah, and I, I, I and it's you know, you've got the the tables there with you know, right around it. So there's plenty of, of room to to sit down and enjoy your meal. Yeah, I actually got to try something new as well. The uh, the street taco fries, as I promised I would try them. Uh, so uh, if, if you guys aren't watching the video version, you're probably not nearly as hungry as those watching the video version. This is legitimately a photo I took, and it, it almost looks like something that would be a promotional photo. And I'm not complimenting my photography. I'm saying this came out so good, but um, it's got... Well plated. Yeah, it's... Um, so... It came in this, like, I saw them messing with, like, the boats that the food come in, you know, the little cardboard boat things, and they were small, so I was like, oh, God, this is going to be a tiny portion, and I'm starving, but they, like, load these things up, um, and this was, I still think Flight Commander Fl Fries in 2022 was my favorite of the Rivertown Potato Works ever. This is the second, though. It's a close second, but it's got queso, it's got 
tortilla chips. It's got pulled pork. Uh, it's got, um, is it verde sauce? Is that the green stuff? Is that how you say it? Words are hard. Yeah, I, words I are hard. But it looks words good. Are, I mean, I think. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that to me looks like that could be a go-to item for you for the rest of the summer. Yep. So five stars would recommend. But yeah, yeah I just and I'm looking to... forward to the burnt ends, the burnt ends back at Coney Barbecue. So a lot of people have been telling me that I need to try that next. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the listener question. So this one's from Girl Meets Coaster. I like that name. It says, when can when can you see Woodstock Express getting some TLC? Maybe some gravity group retracking and new paint. It needs some love for being an original KI ride. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it gets a lot of track work done every year. Uh, a couple of years ago, you know, the 2023 season, there was uh, a lot of track work, you know, being done in the winter months. And, you know, I would, when I worked there, you know, it was right behind where my office was. So I would see that work being done all the time. Uh, so it does get uh, a lot of care. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it's still there, you know, in its 53rd season, just because of that care that's gone into it. I could see them doing the gravity group stuff to sections of it, though. Like, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. No, but I mean, I don't know that it needs it. because uh, it's still, No, no, you know, but it's uh, you're right. And, we, you know, you and I discussed with the uh, the VP of maintenance at Holiday World, the gravity group stuff. And I was always under the impression that the gravity group stuff was a very big front loaded cost, but then saved on maintenance costs down the road. But the way that he explained it to us was that if a park does the gravity group stuff, it's it's front loaded cost and it's cheaper down the road, but it's basically a wash. He said the whole point of buying that gravity group product is to make a more comfortable experience. So until we're to the, the point where you know, it's, it's too rough for people, then I don't necessarily think that we'll see that except for maybe in like small sections here or there, maybe, uh, as yeah. far as paints, paints, painting that is, would be incredibly expensive. Like, th didn't we figure out that it was more expensive to paint the racer than the Eiffel tower? Or something? Yeah. Like, uh, well, know. it would cost more, you know, when, when you paint the racer, it almost cost more to do that than it did the build the ride back in 1972. Not accounting for inflation, though, of course. Right, exactly, uh, exactly. Right, but so wooden coasters, there's a lot to them, so that's why they so rarely get painted. But something like um, Woodstock's Air Air Rail, is that what it's called now? Mm -hmm. That got painted two years apart because Bainham can do that in like. Well, it was painted in 2023, so I mean, it was one yeah. year apart on that one. So yeah, uh, in order well, to no. get the paint sure for Camp it? Snoopy, they had to paint. Wasn't it? It, no, it, was, it, it wasn't. It was 2023. 20, was it 23? I thought it was 22. Mm -hmm. Is because a lot of rides got painted in 22, but oh no, yeah. I was out there. Uh, I remember uh, you know, taking a lot of pictures and posting that on the park social media in the spring of, of 2023. I remember. Um, so they did it in like the fall, right? Is that is that how you recall it as well? For which ride? For uh, w w Flying Ace Aerial Chase at the time. Woodstock they started Park. it. Yeah, they started it in the fall of 2022. And then they completed it, like the track work and everything was done. You know, going into yeah so i i remember like they painted the columns got done first the outside they painted, a, they painted the columns and i remember discussing with my friends like i swear that like that looks so vibrant did they paint that no they didn't paint it yeah they did i'm pretty sure they did because it was just the columns so it was really hard to tell and by the time winterfest came to be it was all painted it looked great yeah yeah now it looked really good in 2023 but you know what it is right now where it's you know fits the theme of Kind of being a tree, you know, where you've got the trunks and, you know, the leaves. It it, it looks fantastic right it now. It looks awesome now. And it really matches the uh, kite-eating tree. A lot of people pointed that out to me as well. It does. Yeah. What's the next question? The next question that we have, and we appreciate the listener questions. If you have any for us, just shoot them to us on our X. Um, it is from a Little Dicky. He says, why wasn't the Phantom Theater Encore show brought back this year? And has been replaced with a show about bubbles. Because people were asking for a show about bubbles. That's why. Um, so I, I'm willing. So here's the thing. The Phantom Theater show was a good case for coming back for a third year. It's unconventional for the park to bring back main stage shows uh, 
just as they were um, for more than two years because there is a diminishing return with it. Um, I thought it was going to come back because the most expensive, one of the most expensive parts of these shows is the development cost involved with them. And then when you run a show for two years, you have that cost once and then you you rework it a little bit the second year most of the time but not not always but my understanding and like let's not beat around the bush it, it was a budgetary thing that's why they have a show replacing it for only three weeks but the cast was really big and that's why that's what the cost involved was that was the number that they looked at but um i think it could have done a third third year run i think it, it could have done it just fine well, if any show that they've had there, you know, in recent years could have been successful with a third year, that would have been it. Uh, it did have a very good following. But as you mentioned, you know, historically at Kings Island, two years in that theater or the Showplace Theater has kind of been the max that they've uh, done the same show. You know, you get celebration for two years, got to dance a couple years, you know. Um, they had Alonzo show, although a little bit different, you know, was a couple years. So, uh, you know, I think it just, when you look at the the base of guests going to Kings Island too, you know, it's so season pass heavy. Um, you know, there's just so many guests that come, you know, 10, 15, 30, you know, hundred times a year. So you had to question too, if you're Kings Island, you know, Cedar Fair, and you're, you're talking about, you know, the, the budgets and what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, is there enough guests that haven't seen that show to, to make it successful for a third year? I think you have to look at it that way too. And, you know, like you mentioned, budgets and that, uh, you know, you saw a lot of different things, you know, getting cut over the past couple of years. And you have to find something that's kind of, you know, kind of fit with what you got to work with. And, you know, that's the bubble show. Yeah. I mean, you and I kind of speculated that they might have had like the show place dark this year. Um, well, yeah. three weeks beats the being dark all year, doesn't it? Well, yeah. No, I'm saying the show place. So fortunately. No, the show place too, yeah the show place has its normal run because it started in mid June, most of the year or mo yeah, it's a little bit shorter than it was even, you know, yeah. before. so it's more toward the end of June this year instead of the beginning, but right. Right. Uh, but let, let give them a pass. Cause that's close. This one, three weeks is definitely, it's a very noticeable short run. Um, I don't want to give them a pass on it necessarily, but I think that we're lucky to have this because I, I, I almost wonder if the plan was to not have anything in there. And then they found this as like, well, we found money in the budget to bring this guy in for a few weeks. Yeah. I'm wondering. I if think it, it fits, more. you know, and it's, you know, uh, you're talking three weeks, but, you know, this is not what I would call a cheap show. I mean, it is very well done. We've seen it at other places. You've seen it before. I saw yeah. it at Dollywood. Uh, it's a very good show. Um, but I think, you know, the three week run for it, it, it definitely beats having Kings Island Theater dark all year. It does, but this also puts them in a situation where they can't win because one of two things is going to, well, there's also like the neutral ground, but let's act, let's act like people don't give it a, a five on the 10 scale consistently. Either they'll bring this in, it'll be a short run, it'll flop, and then they have a show that flopped, or they'll bring it in, the kids will absolutely love it, and then parents will have to complain like, my kid wanted to see that bubble show again, why is it closed already? You know, I, I've got a feeling that it it's the lesser of two evils for uh, uh, versus having the show, the the, the whole theater dark. Uh, but I don't think it's setting that up, them up for success from a guest standpoint. But no, but there's I, there's that urgency, though. You want to see it. You've got three weeks to see it. So you, um, you do. And we're, we're certainly going to do an episode about it. And, you know, it, like I've seen it before and I, I like the, the way that I always described it. It's a grown man blowing bubbles and doing bubble tricks for. 25 minutes and then the last five minutes are awesome maybe i'll feel differently now that i have those expectations set going in or maybe the show is completely different it's been 10 years since i've seen it um but nonetheless we'll we'll see it and we'll we'll talk about pros and cons and you know we'll have a show dedicated to it i'm sure and maybe we'll get some mm -hmm. opinions of people from different age groups and stuff yeah but, exactly yeah great question yeah we miss phantom theater as well uh I wish that that would have been a show that if we didn't get into this whole like weird budget cut, blah, blah, blah stuff, that would have been a great show where they have it for five years, but there's, it's like Phantom Theater Encore and then Phantom Theater Encore 2 where it's a different take and then Phantom Theater Encore 3 where they re have the same characters, but they rework the show 
uh, marginally significantly um, every year. So it's repackaged in a positive way. I think that would have gone well. But the best thing that's going to come out of Phantom Theater Encore, I think, is that at least there's got to be somebody out there, somebody in the in the in the hides of Cedar Fair that thinks like, oh, we should bring that ride back since the show was successful. Not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying it's got to be on the table somewhere. Yeah. All right. Great question. Okay. Hey, I'm Ryan Sir along with Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics.